the average fighter stays locally, he, he's part of that initial harassment, and then he makes a decision. And that decision is either, I'm gonna put the gun away and come back in and just rejoin society. I think a lot of reintegration won't be formal, it'll just be, you'll just notice there are a few of them, fewer of them. On the foreigners, um, they won't be reintegrated. I think as we drain the swamp a bit, most of the foreigners are dependent upon the Taliban. And in fact, what intelligence shows us is the Taliban considers them really more trouble than they're worth in many cases because they've got to guide them around and they've got to live in Taliban networks. So I think what we'll probably find is where we are successful in decreasing the Taliban, the foreigners just won't have anywhere to go. Some of them will obviously be killed and captured because they're just, this is what they want to do, they're here and they just will be. Um, some will leave, I think. But I think they'll be increasingly irrelevant. If you come in and clear this area and you stay a week or two, some of the people now deal with you, you call a sure, you get somebody, you do that, and then you leave, and you're not securing that, then the Taliban immediately come back and immediately, everyone who worked with you is punished and everyone else learned a lesson and won't do that again. But you don't leave, so you stay. You start with coalition and army forces, and you literally secure it. And typically what the enemy does is it tries you. It attacks on the edges, indirect fire, lays IEDs, and you have to sort of work your way through that. During which period the population is watching what you're doing, and they're staying very, very neutral. They're trying to stay out of harm's way. They're trying to stay neutral. In some cases, they may be still helping the insurgency because they think that after the fight, you're going to leave again. And so if they help the insurgency during that period, they're in better shape than if they didn't. Okay, you work through that. The longer you stay, the population starts to say, all right, I'm gonna stay. Or they haven't left. They're not yet at the period. You then try to bring in governance. You bring in somebody who can replace the rule of law that the Taliban actually does pretty effectively, pretty efficiently. You bring in, you start development by bringing in projects, but really what you're doing is you're letting the farmer here have the freedom to farm what he wants, move how he wants, etc. As he starts to get a stake in this, he starts to realize that life gets better. There's more development, there's more economic activity, etc., and there's more freedom in there, and they become bought over. Typically what they do is they start to support the local governments and the coalition forces and they're taking a huge personal and family risk when they do that. Over time, they become more and more vested in that, more and more invested in that. And so suddenly, they've got something to lose. They then start to become the defense of the area. And hopefully, you can transition first to Afghan army, then a combination of army and police. But then the people become the security. I am confident. We can do this, absolutely confident, and we will do this, I believe. Uh, I believe that by this coming summer, it's going to be obvious to the people in this room that things have changed. But it won't be obvious to people 3,000 miles or 10,000 miles away. I think by next December, we'll be able to show with hard numbers and things, real progress. We'll be able to go look. Here's more areas we cover, here's this, this, this. Although there will still be significant, you know, there'll be able to point at corruption and, and whatnot. Um, and I think by the summer of 2011, it will be enough progress where the Afghans and the Taliban particularly believe it, believe they're not gonna win. General, this, uh, um, first off, Afghanistan and the 34 provinces are sovereign and have been from the beginning. We've never, we've never done anything legally or whatever not to. So, in fact, when we talk transitions, uh, I think we really do uh, run the risk of pretty serious failure. I'm, I'm really hesitant on the timeline part because when you put the timelines, although it has a forcing function on people. We got a long way to go. Oh yeah, I saw Russ in the...